Be on guard against all greed or covetousness. Why? For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. To which we say, well, of course, Jesus, we agree with that. Who in their right mind would believe that the value of their life or that their meaning in life is boiled down to how much stuff it is that they have in their life? Who would believe that life consists in the abundance of one's possessions? Nobody. And Jesus would say to us, actually, a lot of you believe that. You're just too blind to see it because you can't see greed in the mirror. Actually, everybody has the temptation to be driven by greed. Every one of us has the temptation to believe about life that it exists in the abundance of one's possessions because everybody has extra. And every time you have extra, greed is there to tell you to take your extra and to spend it on yourself instead of using it for something else. Everybody has extra, and what you do with your extra communicates who or what has your heart. Now, I see what you're, I see on your face, you're looking at me and you're saying, Wes, preacher man, you obviously don't know me because I don't have extra. And the reason that you say that, well, I don't know why you may say that. You may actually not have extra, but if you're able to pay for your housing, your food, your basic necessities, and you still have something left over, then you have extra. Let's put it this way. If you have a cell phone with a data plan, you have extra. <laughs> if, you, if you have ever traded something in that worked for a newer model of the same thing, then you have extra. You have an extra problem. If, um, if you've ever had a garage sale and you pulled something out of your attic that you didn't even know you had until the garage sale, then you have extra. See, we all have extra. In fact, I, re I read an article just, just this past week. It's like they knew I was gonna be preaching on this. That half of the richest 1% of the world's population lives right here in America. One half of the richest 1%. And you know how much money you have to have to be in the richest 1% of the world's population? A household income of $35,000. So if you make $35,000 collectively as a household, then you are in the richest 1% of the world's population. You have extra. The reason that you don't feel like you have extra is because you live in a culture in which everybody else has more extra than you have. Uh, we spend the money that we don't have. We pursue lifestyles that we can't afford. We create financial pressures that we really don't need. And so even though we are rich, we don't feel rich because of what we've done to ourselves. And the reason we do what we do to ourselves in our financial bondage is because we have this hidden assumption, even though we don't think we have it, that life consists in the abundance of our possessions. We don't feel rich because we're not as rich as the other guy. We don't feel rich because we have financial pressures. The reason we have financial pressures is because we believe that life consists in the abundance of our possessions. Now, I want you to feel better about this. So let's just say together, I'm rich. Can we say that together? I know you don't believe it, but just say it. <laughs> On three, one, two, three. I'm rich. Now don't you feel good about yourself? I'm rich, the good news is you're rich. You don't feel rich, the only time you will feel rich, if you go on a mission trip with Broadview, go to Romania, go to Brazil, go to India, you'll feel rich because you'll realize you have way more than the richest person there because half the richest 1% of the world's population lives right here in the USA. You're rich, that's the good news. You have extra, that's the good news. The bad news is you're rich. And how you use your extra communicates to your heavenly father and to everyone around you who or what controls your heart.